Sure, my name is Michelle Lyons and I'm the Public Information Officer for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Basically, my job is to coordinate interviews with our death row media or with our death row inmates and media, or we also answer questions about really anything that's going on in the prison system for media across the world. How do you like dealing with the death row? Most of you deal with the death row inmates, right? Actually, we get a lot of requests for general population inmates as well. It's just that the portion of my job that deals with death row tends to be what gets focused on the most because um, I, I guess there's such a heightened awareness about the death penalty in the United States that that is just constantly the focus of most media. You've been in the media quite a while, right? I worked for newspapers for five years before so I came you, into this you job. Would, you worked a lot on death row or mostly with the prison? I covered prisons for two years and during that time there were a number of executions carried out so I spent a lot of time on death row talking to those inmates who had an execution date prior to their execution. And then um, you reported on Mr. Bear's newspaper? Yes, well I worked for the Huntsville Item which is the local newspaper in the town where executions take place in Texas. So um, because the executions took place in Huntsville and I worked for that newspaper, I had a spot to witness every execution that took place during the time that I was there. How many executions did you watch? During the time that I was a reporter, I witnessed probably about 60 executions. Your feelings about that execution you were at the table there? No, I, I try, I, I think that most people try to leave their work at work. Whether you might be an ambulance driver, you're going to see some unpleasant things. Um, doctor, any job, you try and leave it behind. And when I go home, I try to leave it behind because um, it is just my job. My job is to work with these inmates, and part of my job is to witness the executions, but I leave it at that. So if you schedule dates of death, when, how many times have you witnessed people who were scheduled, had a scheduled date of death that went to Huntsville and returned quite a few times? It happens rarely. Usually they don't make it as far as Huntsville before they find out if they've been given some sort of court relief or been given a stay. Um, it's, it's much more rare that maybe a few minutes before they're scheduled to be executed that they get a stay, but it does happen. Um, in the time that I've covered executions, I can think of a handful of times that it's happened. Job compared to what I did at the newspaper is that in a lot of ways it, it's doing the same type of thing. Uh, when I was a reporter, my specialty was prisons, and that's what I focused on, and I still do that. And at the same time, I still work with the reporters that I was working with all along, and so I really enjoyed that. Um, I've enjoyed getting to try and tell people about many of the positive aspects of our prison system, our educational and vocational programs that we have in place that are hopefully helping our inmates when they're released to succeed in society. In, in all of our units across the state, we have different vocational programs. At one of our units, we have a computer refurbishing plant. So our inmates who are enrolled in that program are learning how to repair computers and are obviously able to get pretty good jobs when they're released. And at the same time, the computers that they fix and they work on are sent out to our low-income school districts so that those children are benefiting. At another unit, we have a school bus repair program. So those inmates are learning how to do mechanical work and at the same time, our taxpayers are saving money because the work that's being done on these school buses are, are being done for just a fraction of the cost that they would pay if they went to someone else in the free world. We have a number of programs like that in place and, and because of it our recidivism rate is at an all-time low. We're having fewer and fewer people come back to us once they are released. One more time about the media, how it's important to It's important that we maintain an open policy to the media. We don't want it to be construed that we're keeping secrets from the media regarding death row or any other policies in Texas. Um, with death row, it, it might be looked at as particularly important that since there are stories on these men and their crimes that the reporters have access to the inmates so that they can also give their side of the story, whether it be if they're proclaiming that they're innocent or they admit their guilt. It's just important that the media has access to them. Yeah. All right. Hello, my name is Robert Looking Bill. I was born 7-22-65, and I have a scheduled date death in January 22nd of 
Yeah, my family, they, they're, you know, especially my sister, she's affected in a bad way about it, you know, so much so that she hasn't been around <laughs> in the past 13 years that I've been incarcerated on this day, you know, on this sentence, you know. Uh, it's just too much, you know, for her to handle, but it doesn't mean she don't care. It's just that she's, a, you know, a little more sensitive than most people are, you know, because we were real close. You know, brother and sister, you know, what can you say? Uh, it's real hard on them and, and my mom, too, because now she's by herself. Now my dad's gone, and and I can't be there for them, you know, being as he's gone now. And uh, they don't know what to expect, you know, because they're not real familiar with the system you know, or the death penalty and the things, you know, that go with it. You know, not many people do. You know, these are these are the taboo kind of things people just, you know, never take an interest in. You know, at least not the majority anyway. You know, my family, you know, I'm, and the majority of us never even thought about a death penalty, you know, until I wound up under it. And, uh, you know, that's usually the case for most people. They don't know they even have one exist, you know, until they, you know, either wind up in trouble or somebody they love winds up under it. And, and in that sense, you know, uh, it's unexpected and unforeseeable and, and unfortunate, you know. Uh, approximately, yeah. Uh, I've, I've been on death row approximately 13 years. And, uh, well, you, you talking about when they go to the walls? Yeah, when you go to Huntsville, well, it usually the last day when you uh, when your date is, you go to uh, to Huntsville. But before you go there, you stay out here for about half a day, and you get to spend uh, a few hours with your loved ones and you know to say goodbye and and uh, to leave whatever property you have with them, you know and. Uh, and then a van comes in and, uh, at the back gate and uh, those that are on death watch can look out the window and see, you know, that, that, last, uh, that last walk, I guess you could say, to the van and watch them, you know, get in and, and they take them to the Wallace unit. And, well, in the, in the in the time that I've been on death row, I've, I've not really watched a lot go all the time, but some of the time I have seen some of the inmates that I, you know, come to know, and, uh, and that would be in high numbers, too. It's like I say, there had been at least 250 people that I know and have watched, you know, go to the walls, you know, if not being in death watch, talking to them before they were taken to the walls and uh, from there you know we never see them again. Huntsville, yeah, the walls in Huntsville and uh, that's where the execution takes place. <laughs>